Hello, I'm Len Thompson. Welcome to Cruise Myths Debunked. Over the next 30 minutes, we're unashamedly going to be talking about the most common myths, misconceptions and cliches that cruise holidays have attracted in the same period of time as, as a growing tremendously in popularity. But I can't do it all alone. Oh no. Who better to help debunk fact from fiction than travel guru Simon Coulter? Simon, nice to see you again. Let's start with the, the, the myth then that uh, cruises are for old folk. Is that, is that the case? Well, fortunately not. I say fortunately, partly from the point of view of the cruise industry who have to expand away from the idea that uh, only the retired people have the time and the money to uh, uh, go on cruises, um, and partly for the benefit of younger cruisers who can actually get the marvellous opportunities of, of cruising to have a good relaxing holiday to see some great parts of the world and maybe to try out uh, some new experiences. So from all points of view, it's the average age of cruising is greatly reducing and we're also seeing a lot of families moving into the uh, uh, cruising arena, partly because of price, partly because it ticks a, it ticks a lot of boxes for, for a family holiday. Talking of cost, are they expensive cruises? Well, no. Or yes. Ah. It all depends what you want. Um, now, uh, I tend to go and I go on a lot of cruises, typically one or two a year, um, for a lower cost option, which will be one of two things. Either it will be on one of the big, um, as it were, American owned uh, lines such as Carnival, which owns familiar brands um, uh, such as uh, P&O, Princess, um, Holland America. Um, there's also, of course, uh, Royal Caribbean. Um, there's also Norwegian. And they tend to have big ships with good prices. And I'd be looking at not paying much more than about £70 per person per night, right. um, which in the course of a 500 uh, a a one-week holiday costs about £500. Mm. Now, you've really got to add to that the cost of tips, which could easily add 15%. So maybe you're looking at about £575 for a week. But, uh, you know, it's still extremely good value. You're going to have to build in the cost of flights. But even so, I think it's very competitive, not just with a, an overseas land-based holiday, but sometimes, and I travel with my family, um, at half term, the prices of UK land-based holidays at places like centre parks can be so high that actually a cruise is a good way to save money. It's cheaper. I've got a whole list of myths here for you, Simon. Yeah. And uh, if you're checking these out at home, some of these answers uh, were becoming from Simon. What about crowded? You know, a lot of crowds on boats, on ships. Yeah, that you don't. I don't want to have a lot of crowd. I want to be, you know, on my own. Can I? Can I be on my own? Uh, okay, you you can in a couple of ways. First of all, you can pay serious money and get a smaller ship. Um, you can get as few as 200 people, maybe even fewer than that on a ship, but the uh, unit cost will increase very severely. But even on a big ship, it rarely feels crowded. Where it does feel crowded, and this is crucial, is when you get ashore. And suddenly, if you're on some beautiful Caribbean island uh, where they've got you know, 200 people in uh, on the streets of the main town, suddenly 5,000 people get off a ship. It's going to change the character. So therefore, I would suggest if that's important that you see a place without too much crowding, you maybe go on a ship. There's quite a lot of nice older ships which maybe have a thousand people or so uh, and a thousand people in a destination is a very different experience to five thousand people in a destination. Another myth is I'll be stuck on board. I can't get off this ship. Ah, oh, well, the whole point is that um, you can get off during ports of call and that, that is, from my view, my point of view, the absolute essential part. Of course, if you are cruising from somewhere to somewhere else, particularly on something like an Atlantic crossing um, or maybe um, on the Pacific coast of the Americas, there's some quite long sectors and you have one or more sea days, then you won't, certainly won't be able to get off. But the whole idea is that they'll put plenty of entertainment on board. But otherwise, at the stops, you'll be encouraged to get off, maybe to take an excursion organised by them, but otherwise just to do your own thing. A lot of younger families are going on board uh, cruises now, and they're on ships uh, for a cruise. Um, what about the youngsters? Will they get bored? Uh, will, even a, an adult, will they get bored? Well, OK, let's start with the youngsters. Um, the cruise lines are getting very good at their kids' club offering. Uh, really, from any anybody from about kind of two years old onwards um, is going to find something for them. Uh, they will have specific age 
ranges for kids club and then once you get into teenagers it can get a little bit tricky because i don't know um, about you but my own teenagers you know they just want to be cool and cruising isn't necessarily all about cool so that's that's that can be quite yeah. tricky um and then adults well there's so much going on that it would be difficult to get bored and if you do just wander down to the library pick up a book and you know, just sit on deck and read it. So you could chill out if you want. I was going to say, on the other hand, you could be too busy, couldn't you? Yeah, and they've got great shows on board, um, all sorts of things from, you know, there's always a, a kind of big set piece show. Um, they've got individual entertainers, musicians, um, conjurers, uh, magicians, um, all, all sorts of uh, good things going on. A uh, hypnotist occasionally, which, which can be quite entrancing. <laughs> and uh, th th there's lots going on. OK, what about um, the, the cultural experience? Uh, depends, I guess, where you go as far as a cruise is concerned, whether you take in uh, the, Rome, the, 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 the coast of Rome or, or wherever, the, the, uh, the Greek islands or whatever. Um, is it a cultural experience? It jolly well should cruise? be, yeah, but it all depends on your ports of call and what you do when you get there. I think it's so important and it's part of the p appeal of cruising. I mean, I've just been on a, a Mediterranean cruise where in the space of a week we went from Barcelona, which is, of course, extraordinary in terms of modern Easter architecture, to uh, Cartagena, a revived um, uh, port on the coast of Spain with some astonishing Roman antiquities, to Gibraltar, one of the great uh, uh, meeting places of the world, then across to Marseille, fabulous port city, Genoa, the maritime hub of the world, uh, and along to uh, Livorno, close to Pisa, and then finally Civita Vecchia for Rome, all of which has immense cultural worth. Now, you, first of all, you have to get off the ship, and secondly, you need to plug into that, and you can do that either on an excursion or indeed on your own. And um, whichever way you do it, it's so worthwhile making sure you're extracting the most. Another good way to make sure you're properly appreciating the culture is to go to the um, lectures that you will have generally the mm. afternoon or evening before a port of call, where they're going to tell you about what this place is and how it fits into the world at large. Um, I'm new to cruising. Uh, I think I mentioned that to you before on a previous programme. Um, my worry if I'm stopping at lots of different ports and getting off with my family, with my wife, with my sons, Unlikely that my sons will be coming with me now because they're too old, <laughs> but they might want to <laughs> if Dad's paying. Yeah. Um, is the time limit? I mean, you, you go on yeah. shore. Uh, what time do I have to be back? Oh. You know, I've got to get all this work in, all this sort of sightseeing yeah. in, and I've got to be back on board by six o'clock. That feels like I'm rushing. Glenn, that um, the is holiday isn't mine. Such an important point, and um, it's actually one of those things that I've, you know, I've got a few things which I think the cruise industry needs to address. Sometimes they'll say, you've got till five o'clock for very good reason, which is that they are covering overnight, uh, you know, 500 nautical miles and they've got to get going mm. um, uh, straight away. Otherwise, a cynical person would say they just want everybody on board so that from six o'clock onwards, your gin and tonic isn't in the lovely local neighbourhood bar. <laughs> um, it's on board their ship. It's um, their profit margin, their monopoly prices they and their, their, their gratuities. Yeah. yeah. And I think increasingly there will be demand from passengers, particularly if you're if you're somewhere like uh, the Greek islands, where who doesn't want to be? sitting in a lovely taverna as the sun descends before you step on board the ship um there will be there's definitely demand for people who are going to for, for cruise lines which will deliver um longer stays mm. if it's not necessary for nautical pers people purposes then let us stay on board and that also of course gives you much longer to enjoy the day what about the myth of booking in advance i mean ah, booking ages in advance yes. will i have to book like a, a year ahead <sighs> Or is it a cheaper offer if I get it a year ahead? Well, uh, you should see the amount of correspondence I get from people who are furious because they were told by the cruise company, book a year and a half in advance and, and we'll give you a great deal. Now, a couple of things that can go wrong. They will not say, Glenn, book a year and a half in advance and we will give you a better deal than anybody else on board the ship because there's, the, the cruise industry works on 100% occupancy. It's not like a hotel where, you know, if they fill eight out of 10 rooms on a particular night, they're happy. Cruises, they are aiming for 100% occupancy, not least, because then they've got the maximum spend going on in the bars, the casinos, the shops, the excursions, and so on. And so 
they may well cut the price shortly before departure. Um, yeah, there will be certain times of year, particularly during the school holidays for British focus cruises where you are going to miss out. But if you're not constrained to the school holidays, then you can book a cruise quite typically the day before you go. And you might be the person who annoys everybody else. And, and this uh, certainly a lot of people have been annoying me <laughs> by saying, oh, I only booked yesterday. I paid 600 quid and I paid a thousand for it. So you don't yeah, want to hear that, do you? You don't want to hear it, but um, <laughs> uh, no need to book it ahead. And the other thing which you can find if you book ahead is that the itinerary will change. Um, uh, the cruise I've just been on, for example, was going to go to Sicily, was going to go to Tunisia because of the events. It didn't go to either. And um, uh, so the people who booked really early because it was going there. So be prepared for a last minute yeah. change then. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. OK. All right. Well, don't go anywhere. We'll be back with Simon very shortly, debunking more cruise myths right here. Stay with us. Hello, welcome back to Cruise Myths Debunked, where travel expert Simon Calder is helping to debunk the most common cruise myths and misconceptions. Simon, we've covered quite a lot of ground, or water if you like. <laughs> um, what about uh, uh, taking the cruise line excursions? I mean, do I have to feel that I have to go on all the excursions that they offer, or can I pick and choose? Well, uh, that's a very good uh, question. Now, on some, and a very limited number of uh, cruise lines, the excursions are included, so you might as well. They'll generally be on the more cultured cruises, um, lines like uh, Swan Hellenic, where actually part of the deal you're buying is the opportunity to have these uh, great cultural experiences, and you'll tend to find that pretty much everybody will go on those. Um, apart from that, first of all, no, you don't need to go on every excursion. Secondly, you don't need to go on the cruise line's own excursions. Um, they will very much encourage you to do so because it's in their financial interest and they will also say you know glenn will give you a we'll, we guarantee we'll deliver you a great trip furthermore we guarantee we'll get you back to the ship because if you're on an official excursion um if you're held up in traffic or whatever getting back to the mm. ship on your tour bus then they'll wait for you they don't give any such guarantee if you're on your own um however a lot of people take that risk and either do things independently and frankly, for a lot of ports of call, if you've got a decent guidebook and a map, that's all you need. You just yeah. go off and explore. Or increasingly, you will find third party companies um, which are coming in and say, we will offer a, 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 an excursion experience which is just as good or maybe even better than what you get on board. Um, but we will do it at a much cheaper price because we haven't got the overheads of the cruise line and we're not trying to make as much profit as them. Um, and that's a perfectly valid option as well. So no need to take the cruise lines excursions. You might decide that they're just what you need, that you might decide, I've got a better idea. So no obligation to take them then, but you're, you're free to arrange your own if you, if you yes. really want to. What about um, eating? A lot of folk don't like eating in front of people. My brother's one, for example, doesn't like eating in front of people he doesn't know. Mm. And I know that's a, a, quite a no, serious no. concern for a lot of folk. They don't like sitting down yeah. with a big table full of yeah. people. They don't know. I mean, how do we get over that one? Oh, OK, so partly by planning in advance, partly by taking action when you're there. Yeah, it's not for everybody. Some people love the idea that uh, you'll be sat with um, uh, a whole group of people uh, you've never met before, maybe on a big uh, table for 10, um, and you'll either be stuck with them for the whole week or just be for that meal. Uh, and that's great for people who like it. For people who don't, then you need to make sure before you sign up for a cruise that there will be options for uh, dining maybe just as a couple and most ships can do that and then you need to reinforce that by just having a word when you get on board just saying um, you know we prefer to uh, dine together with without um, other else? company and by the way if you can get us that table over by the uh, by the window that would be just perfect and um, uh, here's something for your trouble uh, that that would tend tend to work so increasingly it's you know you you, you won't be landed with strangers yeah. from um, uh, when you'd much rather be speaking to your loved one but equally you might strike up a great conversation with Gladys and Fred and they oh. might just want to be with you you know yeah. uh, f throughout oh, the whole yeah. trip you yes know, oh, it, and it, you it, won't it is, without them it's a very sociable experience I mean Cruises, if you are Jean-Paul Sartre and you believe that um, uh, hell is other people, um, then 
it's probably not for you. You need to be in a solitary villa somewhere. Um, so I think most people are fairly tolerant, but uh, yeah, you, you can, being on a table with a lot of people mm. with whom you don't have much in common can get a little weary. All right, Simon, now talking of dinner, the food is below par. That's another myth, isn't it? Oh, the food's not great. Uh, right, you're, you're talking about mass catering here. Yes. And particularly on the new mega ships when you've got, what, over 6,000 passengers. Um, it's a lot of cooking. It's a lot of cooking <laughs> and it needs to be done in a way that uh, uh, maximises efficiency and minimises the cost. It gets better and better as you go for the formal dining options in the evening, which do tend to be kind of, you know, the, the kind of good upmarket restaurant experience. Um, and if you're prepared to pay for a speciality restaurant, it might be Japanese food, it might be a good steakhouse, then you will get absolutely the best of the best that you might get on a land-based ship. I know a lot of folks that have been on cruises and one of the top things they always say is how fantastic the food is. There's such great variety, lovely tasty food, fresh food. That I've, I very rarely hear anybody complaining about the food. Talking of which, if the food is so great, you're going to start putting on weight, Simon. It, it is a very serious danger um, because for a lot of us, it's simply not normal that uh, we can, we, we've effectively paid in advance for as much food as we can ha eat. Um, and we, you know, it's all sitting there. We don't need to do anything different. And if you're sitting at the formal restaurant and you think, oh, I can't decide whether to have the fish or the steak. I'll have both, please. Yeah, it's, um, it's very easy to do and uh, you won't be charged any extra for it. So I think you do need to kind of discipline yourself and they're not suddenly going to take the buffet away and you won't ever see it again. 24 hours a day, you can get food and just um, just you know, a little and uh, eat a little, particularly on sea days when you're not necessarily going to be racing around getting uh, particularly fit. And I must say, I much prefer having my lunch on dry land at a local restaurant guess what, where I'm paying real money and I'm not going to say, oh, I'll have the fish and the steak and while I'm at it, uh, uh, I'll have three desserts, um, partly because I'm paying for it. And um, uh, so, yeah. so gluttony is something best avoided in all circumstances. And I guess if you have got that fear of putting on weight, then if you're able-bodied, you can use the big sweeping staircases on these ships rather than using the, the oh, lifts oh, and the oh, yeah. top, top rule when I'm on a cruise and my family is never use the lift. Um, Just always go up the stairs. Run up the stairs, yes. Good tip. OK. Um, another myth we want to debunk here is I, I couldn't travel alone as a, on, on my own as a yeah. single traveller. Okay. A, a lot of folks, would they be frightened well, well, of that, do you think? Increasingly, with an ageing population, with a number of people who, for whatever reason, are no longer with their partner, whether that's divorce, bereavement, whatever, um, they are travelling on their own. Now, there's nothing to stop you except possibly the price. And a common complaint is not just that it costs the same for one person going cruising as it does for two, even though clearly they're only eating one person's amount of food, etc. But it can sometimes cost more for one person than for two together. Um, and you think, well, what's going on there? And it's mm. simply a matter of the cruise ship economics. If you're going there on your own, then you are not going to be drinking, perhaps, or gambling or whatever, as much as if you and your wife were there and you were both both spending. And the onboard spend is a very important part of the, uh, the, the cruise ship economics. Having said that, off-peak, you're much more likely to get to bargain if you're, if you're cruising alone. OK, quite a few more myths to d debunk. Yeah. Um, and time's getting short, Simon, so let's rattle through them. The cabins and staterooms are really small. Some of them are, yeah, most definitely. Uh, you're not going to get too much um, luxury, however, um, yeah, you, you need to, you, you don't uh, expect to, you know, it's not, not a hotel, it's not even a motel. It's quite a confined space. They've got to pack lots in. If you want a lot of space extra, you're going to be paying a lot more. A balcony is a necessity, is it? Not a necessity, increasingly common. And if you want the joyful experience of waking up and seeing uh, as you approach a place, it's a really, it could be really important. Another myth, I'll have to fly to join the ship. I don't like flying. Um, How do we get over that one? Well, because um, increasingly you can cruise direct from the UK. Southampton is, of course, the key port, but uh, uh, but but um, Dover, um, Leith in Scotland, um, and now Liverpool in uh, in the northwest are are becoming significant cruise ports. What about getting seasick? 
I, That's got to be a common one, surely. Isn't well, it? it all depends. If you're on one of the huge ships in the Mediterranean, uh, you're, you're very unlikely to uh, experience any real sense of motion at all. If you're on a smaller expedition ship off the coast of Cape Horn in um, South America, you'll certainly expect uh, experience some some sense of motion and possibly motion sickness. Just go with the flow, is what yeah. I say. Yeah. Uh, cruising is too regimented. You've got to be at uh, dinner at five o'clock. You've got to meet the captain at, uh, for drinks. Uh, 6.30, I mean, you've got to be there or else. I mean, it's too regimented. Well, it is regimented mostly for good reason. Limited number of staff and limited number of um, uh, uh, facilities. And so you've got to keep things in order. But generally, they're moving away from set dining times to uh, any time dialing. So it's, it's kind of up to you. But you can plug in and out as you wish. What about the myth, Simon, that cruising has lost its glamour and its charm? Uh, it all depends. If you're on one of the really upmarket small ships uh, where the prices are very premium and so are the passengers, uh, plenty of glamour and glitz there. I like to say that it's been democratised and anybody can choose whatever level they want um, if their pockets are deep enough. What about the myth of um, staying in touch with your family and friends? I mean, I know a lot of ships are going to sort of yeah. uh, jump here. I've got social media now, uh, Wi-Fi and what have you. Yeah. You can keep in touch, surely, can't you? Well, well you can do. Whether you should is a different thing, partly because right. you're abroad and you should be relaxing. The yes. uh, second thing is pure cost. I signed up for a, a, a limited package of, um, I think, 10 hours of internet. It cost me £140. Wow. So, uh, yeah, just, just for £140. It's, wow. it's kind of 20 pence a minute or something Ooh. like that. It goes back to the olden days of the internet and it wasn't much faster Might either. Might be worth checking out with your mobile phone operator before you head off. Say yeah. you're going on a cruise. Is there a special package? No, it's worse it? than that. You're Is generally it? reliant on a maritime satellite when you're at sea, which oh. is going to be £3 a minute. So... Keep your phone turned off until you're on dry land. There we are. Some cruise myths debunked. Simon Calder, as always, thank, thank you. you so much. And thank you for watching. I'll see you again next time right here on TV Cruise Channel. Bye for now.